What is going on, everybody? It's Rock D Lee, and what's in my cup is in my cup. It's Miss All Sunday. Y'all want to jump in with a Mushiko Tensei episode 23 final review, guys. The series has ended in on a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal note. I'm going to say it right off the jump. I think this is the best written isekai that I've experienced personally. Now, I want to be very clear. I'm not saying it's the best. I'm not saying it's my favorite. But I am saying it's the most well written. The reason why I say all those little disclaimers is because I really enjoy Overlord. And I really love Slime. And when I compare the writing of the characters to, to of Slime to the development of Mushiko Tensei, you know, it's not to take one away from the other, but Mushiko Tensei is going in with the writing, where for me, Slime, the characters are simply much more lovable. I think that's objective. So I want to talk to you guys about some of the things that we ended up with Mushiko Tensei, and I was like, wow. And if I could be honest with you, I, got, I honestly think... Even the second season resonates with me more than the first season or the first half of the season because they did these chorus. Anyways, so we're going to jump into it, guys. Uh, I'm going to cover some of the highlights of that episode, right? Um, and, I, and I honestly, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think one of the reasons why I also appreciate uh, core two of season one is honestly my own maturity. You know, watching anime. I'm trying to see big bitties, action, you know, a good story and, and lovable, likable characters, as I mentioned, Slime. And Mushiko Tensei did something on the first half that made me very uncomfortable, guys. So I'm going to go back into covering why I thought this final episode was phenomenal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But one of the things, just to get off the bat, is a lot of people have a hard time with uh, Rudy's previous uh, reincarnated reincarnation including myself in the past. And I've talked about on the past review or reviews why this is not a big deal. And I'm going to say my final reason, unless I think of a new original thought. My final reason for the fact that Rudy, you know, is a soul of 40 years, as people say, is because, you know, once you entertain a reincarnation, the second question is how many times was he reincarnated? What happens to the soul? There's a whole bunch of questions that have not been addressed yet that I'm already asking or wondering in the back of my mind that I don't bring up in reaction videos because I start assuming everybody's reincarnated. I start assuming that nobody's going to hell or heaven. What happens when you die? Whole bunch of questions. And I start thinking that the only thing that separates Rudy from everybody else is the fact that Rudy has his memories. Everybody's reincarnated, right? So, like, not everybody's reincarnated, but everyone is a recycled soul or what have you. There is something to be said in this show. And, again, I'm an anime only. Don't ruin it for me. I'm going to find out. And I'm going to go fast forward because, again, I don't want to repeat things that we've already talked about in the past. I don't even think that Rudy's age should be something that we consider in the anime because what I think the author was trying to do, and I could be wrong, what I think the author was trying to do was be different, making an isekai character, right, who's, you know, at this moment in the anime, 14 years old, right? And it's his second chance at life. He didn't do well in the previous life. There's more to be discovered and he didn't do well in the first life. He's going to do well in this life, so we hope. And he's going to retain some memories so that he can reflect on how he screwed up before and make this better. I really need to narrow in on this because a lot of people are going to lose what I'm trying to say. See, some people are taking the memories of his past life and then saying he's 40 years old. And it's like... I understand the rationale, but I truly believe the writer hadn't. And you know what? Send me an article. I truly believe the writer had no intention of saying, I'm going to take a character and have him be 40 years old, smashing, you know, younger characters. I'm going to be careful what I say on uh, on this on, so I don't get sound, sound bited or whatever. I truly believe what it was is he's a boy again. He has the opportunity to restart at life. But he retained some uh, memory of the last time he was a boy, and hopefully he can do better at it. You know, a lot of us, through whatever it is, wish we had a chance of doing 
you know, something over again, you know? Yo, if I was, if I, like, for me, my starting point would be, like, college, right? Actually, it's not even college. It's a little bit past point. But don't worry about it. But anyways, and it's like, man, I wish I was this age again so I would do things a little bit differently. But mine tends to be, like, financial stuff, right? So I can only imagine, you know, me being 30, right? And I'm, and I'm not going to get myself caught up with Rudy, so I'm going to use ages that I'm comfortable putting on, online for myself. I can only imagine me being 30 and I get and I have a time rewind or I get isekai and I wake up in my 20 year old body and that's just it. I'm 20 years old, right? And the girls around me are obviously 20, 19, 18, right? And you know, the law is that they're all legal, but I already know with the 30 year old mindset, I'm way ahead of these people. So what am I supposed to do? Wait until I'm also 30? I'm going to leave that for you guys to marinate on. But again, I think it was not meant and we should not be focusing on his age as a soul. The only purpose of it is so we can ref so that he can have a better life here and have an opportunity to reflect on the last time he screwed up and moved forward. Now, let's talk about the last time he screwed up. So here we are. We have Rudy in his room. And what happened is, as we all know, you know he had an amazing time. I don't actually know how amazing it is, but he had a good time with Eris. The reason why I say I don't know how amazing it is because that's not the scenario in which most people want to, uh, you know, do things in their uh, as their first. I'm gonna just say that, right? I can't, I can't speak for everybody, but Rudy didn't even seem like he was so like enthused before it happened. But damn well after it happened, my boy was excited. So he has a great encounter with uh, Eris. Um, you know, we fast forward a bit. Okay. And then we have, oh, let me go. Where is Eris? Then we have Eris, you know, explaining, yo, she did so she could protect him. But Rudy don't know that. He doesn't know. Let's, let's, let me do it. Let me just play it. Oh, it's even a Rudy is someone to talk about. I love Rudis. I'll go and see him again someday. I'll try to get strong enough to be the dragon god. Yeah, this chick right here, man. Look, look, I know she's young. I know she's 15. And I know that I'm supposed to look at her and go, uh, yeah, I understand what you're doing, Shawty. You're young. But Eris is right now in my unforgivable. Uh, no, no, she is forgivable. Unless she murders somebody that I care about. You know, everyone has a uh, has an opportunity to second chance. That's Rudy's story. By the way, don't lose sight of that. Rudy had a whole time in which his previous li previous life he screwed up. His redeeming quality was he sacrificed himself. Oh, I'm not really good. He sacrificed himself in front of a truck. That's the only reason he's here. Don't ever forget his last act in his previous life. Anyways, Rudy gets a second chance. We're gonna give Eris a second chance because I know it's gonna come full circle. But she truly believes that leaving him is in his best interest. She truly believes that. And I'm like, lady, you don't tell. Well, she wrote the letter. I just don't know. You made a decision for him. Let's move forward, okay? We're going to move forward. And we're actually going to talk about what I thought uh, made this episode gr uh, be so great. So we had a young... <laughs> I want to say yuck. We had a Rudy in his previous life. And what happened with Rudy is, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and play it. I'm gonna go ahead and play it. It's quite, it's actually quite sad. I've been through things like this. Girl, he's a, he's a paying attention to her. Go on, move it. All these people are punks. He gets in front of these girls. Who the hell do these guys think they are? Hey. Yep. Yep. So Rudy gets himself. He's, he tried to speak out for other people. He's in a lot more than a lot of us would, right? Address these gentlemen, and he got absolutely humiliated. Look at this, guys. Look at the humiliation this man has faced in his previous life. I don't think you guys understand the shame looking at this railing. I don't know who's seen him. They haven't shown on the other side, like, who's seen him, who's pointing at him, who's laughing at him. Oh my God, he basically got he crucified 
and just an emotion. Yes, crucified. You see, even watching again, symbolically, I believe this is the end of Rudy participating in the social world. He got crucified and emotionally destroyed here. This is actually when Rudy died, as far as I'm concerned. And that means that in Rudy's pet previous life, he died at the age of like 16. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. I know he has some longer times and we had to deal with the truck coon. But yeah, no, this is when he died. And I think he died here from a symbolic point of view. Somebody say, I got a Smallville scene, okay? We're gonna fast forward. And who was at his door? It's his mother. His mother and his father is reaching out to him, okay? And until this episode, I didn't realize that Rudy, I was thinking that Rudy just didn't have anybody. But no, Rudy was actually pushing people away in this life, okay? He was pushing people away and he had his mother reaching out to him, as we see, right? And then what do we see as we reach the ending of this series? What do we see as we reach the ending? We see... There you go. And it was like a random dream, his mom. It took me a while for me to realize what was happening here. And what's happening is, okay, uh, Rudy realizes that he was not, a, uh, in this lifetime, he's possibly alone because his mother, because Eris abandoned him. And look, Eris left him a note. Like his mother left a note. I don't know if he's realizing that Eris is similar to his mom in the sense that she also cares about him. But Eris left him a note. And what he's realizing is in this world, he has one final person. Well, I shouldn't say final. But he has one additional person who cares about him like in his previous life. It's his mother. And she has to be rescued. And I think what makes this episode so beautiful and unlike a lot of things that I've seen before. Okay, look at Rudy right here. Rudy has spent his whole life uh, being alone. Well, in his previous life, being alone. And in this lifetime, you know, around people. And he's grown a dependency on being around people because in his previous life, he had nobody. So he's become very dependent. He has never thrived at being alone. The writing is all on the wall. He has never thrived at being alone. You know how we know that? Look at him right here. Whatever Rudy has been alone is generally this state. Uh, in the beginning of the friend, in the beginning of this episode, we saw Rudy in the bed. He is never good at being alone. And I haven't read the manga; don't spoil it for me. But watching this episode made me really excited about where we're gonna pick up here because now we're gonna be getting a Rudy who is alone and is gonna be handling stuff all by himself. That's gangster. Guys, you need to learn how to thrive and be alone. He's not going to be a shut-in. Look, look, look right here. He is facing the world. Okay? He's facing the world. And in the beginning of the episode, he was not facing the world. He was, he was crouched over. I also, I also need you guys to see something, right? You see? Like, like that, this, is, this is a scene where I realized, right, that he's not this guy anymore. Okay, he's not this guy. This guy got crucified. He's a dead version of himself. This is who Rudy. Is. This is who the character is. He's Rudy now. And again, I I so believe that. Don't get caught up in the fact that he had a past life, and then say this man is forty years old. His past life, from a writing perspective, is important, so that when he has a new uh, hand. A opportunity to do things over again right he has some past memories to reflect on and he's like I'm not going to be that person that's what it's for so when people say ah oh, he's 40 and he's gross out and they don't give the series a uh, opportunity anymore I was one of those people I first watched it and I was a little outraged I was a little outraged but I'm the kind of person you know to kind of see it through you know I'm not gonna lie to you these patrons are pretty excited about the series so i was like let let me finish watching this i'd be a fool to drop it <laughs> i'm not gonna lie to you guys i am honest but anyways as i'm watching it because if i didn't reach this point guys i wouldn't even be making these videos this this is if you look at this review channel i probably make the most videos to mushiko tensei 
it's one piece of Mushiko Tensei and one piece I do like little like memes or a little not even memes I sample material this I have original thoughts because I, I truly believe that Mushiko Tensei uh, has so much flaw not flawed but it has so much characters that push you to truly want to understand who they are what they are and why they tick it's deep not everybody is this lovable character look at this guy this guy came and said yeah that Eris needs to marry I don't know not marry oh I wish it would have had a different uh, ending uh, needs to be a concubine do we think this guy is inherently bad no he's just trying to keep it together the best way he knows how man so it has so much rich characters that's why I appreciate Mushiko Tensei now as we're ending this as we're ending this let's talk about uh, uh, Ghislaine okay or is it isn't it Ghislaine yeah let's talk about Ghislaine I believe she's an older woman, so I think she should have coached uh, Eris a little bit better. She failed in that department. I'm a little bit sad for her, but hey, I appreciate the shoddy. Apparently, all she's good with... Oh, no, let me not do that. I was going to say a joke, but I don't really mean that because I really like her as a character. And a lot of it is because she's freaking beautiful and she can swing a sword. But she's few in words and she, sl she sl uh, slings that goddamn sword. But I don't want to say that's all she can do is swing a sword. But I was going to make a joke. And I caught myself. And I was like, that's not cool. So we're going to talk about the homie Rudyard and how Rudus has touched him. Rudyard's curse is getting lifted. I mean, he's joking with freaking humans, man. I don't know, man. Sometimes as a minority myself in this country, I don't want to take it there, guys. But as a minority in this country, and I'd be joking with people of European descent, and they don't take me as a threat. Every now and then, I reflect back to the homie MLK. I'm not trying to say that Rudy is like MLK, because eventually I'm going to lose somebody. But you dare compare. I'm just trying to say, man, you reach points where you're like, yo, I pay homage to that person that paved the way. So when I saw Rudyard, uh interacting with people and people getting over their prejudice of him being a Subard, you know, interacting with them, he's doing a good deed for them. That really stuck out to me because he's a big, tall, menacing Sue bird. Really stood out to me. I, I enjoyed it. Then we got, uh, we had these wolf people. I, they didn't, they honestly didn't stick out much to me. I'm not gonna lie. Um, who stood out to me again is Paul. Are we going to reach Paul or did I go too fast? Aisha comes back to Paul and then Paul says something. Oh, here we go. Paul says something. Let me go. Let me go. Dad. Aisha. It's been a long time, my lord. I'm glad you both are safe. What about mom? What about mom? Oh, I missed it. I should have come back to. Oh, she says I'm already right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Your mom is waiting for your big brother. You guys know how powerful this scene is. This girl wasn't fucking with Rudy in the beginning because Rudy was beating up her daddy. So he says, Norn, your mom is waiting for your big brother. Paul is not interacting with Rudy, guys. And he has so much faith for whatever Rudy is going through that Rudy is going to prevail. And he does. And here we go. And here we go. And then again, we come to the end. And look, as Eris is fumbling the bag, my girl Roxy's going to come up. My girl Roxy's going to come up. And we're going to save Zenith. Look at this homie. Look at this homie. Why are people... Well, don't hate this guy. Don't hate this guy. He's a troubled character like everybody. He's a flawed human like everybody. And he is trying. He's trying. This is not my normal video, guys. Like I said, what's in my cup is in my cup. I wanted to do this video earlier. But, yo, my... my it's, it's holiday break. I've had my daughter. 
this lady did not go to bed until like five minutes before this video was made. I was like, lady, go to bed. <laughs> she wouldn't do it. So I'm looking forward to next season, guys. Uh, I'm really looking forward to next season. Some people thought we didn't watch the end credit. I'm like, dude, we watch the end credit. So anyways, so guys, thanks for watching my or listening to my reviews some of my thoughts. I'm uh, looking forward to another dope series. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to do after Mushiko Tensei because again, it's the episode that ends, and I'm like, yo, let me let me put on some thoughts and analysis. And I like what we I like what we've been doing on this channel. I want to do more of it, so I gotta figure out figure out how. The purpose of this channel is actually be a backup channel. I'm, I'm sure you guys heard of some of the things that happened to totally not Mark. So you know, creators have backup channels. But I'm like, just asking people to go to our backup channel. Why? Why would anybody do that? So my thought process was, let me add some value, you know, deliver additional content, and then give people a strong why. You know, not only is it just like a backup channel, but I'm gonna provide you with some entertainment. So, anyways, I uh, thank you guys for watching. If you guys haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so. Uh, we do have full reactions on the Patreon. If you guys are new here, I'm active on Twitter. I'm active on Discord. So go ahead and check out the links in the description of this video. <gasps> Follow me there. I'm active on TikTok. I just added this thing called Cameo. It's another way. Um, so if you guys want like a personal message or or a DM, because people would be trying to DM me and I can't keep up keep up with everybody. The point is, if you're trying to hit me up with a DM of something that I've never answered, Cameo is a great app. Um, you will get me like a guaranteed answer. So anyways, until next time, guys. Rock D. Lee. I'm out.